now let's start looking at this um, multiple choice paper one practice test one I'll call it now remember you have these practice tests in the website and you should have answer the questions already online and when you click submit you would see your score you should practice paper one probably many persons who plan to do the exam neglect to practice paper one or to practice it adequately but remember it carries a significant proportion of the marks in the exam so you should not neglect it all right also bear in mind the time limit you have 60 questions to answer in 90 minutes and you would have seen that video that I've placed on the home page of cxcm.org all right now let's start with question one how many kilograms are in one ton this is a question that require your knowledge and the answer here do you know what it is question one C all right that's 1,000 kilograms that are in one ton let's continue the number 3.14063 correct to three decimal places is did you get that correct in the test or in the online exam that's two is B correct to three decimal places because remember you know when you're talking about decimal places you're talking about the number of digit that you pass when you go from left to right the number of digit that you see once you pass the decimal point so that's going to be one digit two digits three digits you're going to stop at the zero but then the number after zero if it's five or more you go back and add one to the zero so you get 3.141 so question two the answer is b let's see what question three is Expressing standard form 0 0.00368. Did you get that correct in your practice online? What do you, what's the answer? It is A. Question 3 is A. So in this case, this in standard form. You're going to write three, the first non-zero digit that you see as you look from left to right. 0.68, the point after that digit. Now this must be multiplied by something to make it back to 0 0.00368. If you have, for example, the point here as in this case you have to go one two three step back th three steps back all right so it indicates that you must multiply by 10 to the you're going to the left so it's a negative three decimal places back negative three so question three is a this is the same as dividing by a thousand by 10 to the positive 3 would be like multiplying by a thousand this you're dividing by a thousand all right so you have 3 3.68 
over 1000 is equal to 0 0.00368 which is what we have here so this is like a division by a thousand you're dividing this back by a thousand so it is by 10 to the negative 3 all right let's continue question 4 0 0.625 written as a common fraction is what do you think what is it the answer is B 4 is B alright let's see what that is all about why is 4 B now you have 0 0.625 you're converting a decimal to a fraction any number you write is like the number over 1 so it's 0 0.625 divided by 1 what number can you multiply both the numerator and denominator by to get rid of this point business you get a whole number over a whole number if you multiply 0 0.625 by a thousand what you're going to get is 625 so you multiply the top by a thousand you must multiply the bottom by a thousand too so it's 625 over a thousand you see that now if you want to cancel down with 25 and remember what to do no problem but i'll cancel down with 5. 5 into 625 goes well 5 into 6 goes one time and leave one 5 into 12 goes two times and 2 remain 5 into 25 goes 5 so this is 125 over 5 into 10 goes 2 is 200 if you want to cancel by 5 again 5 into 12 goes 2 times leaving 2 5 into 25 5 so this is 25 over something 5 into 24 and the 0 is 25 over 40 and if you do it again 5 into 25 at the top goes 5 times 5 into 48 so you have 5 over 8 5 eighths B alright now we look at question 5 question 5 says 2 open bracket a square b close bracket all cube is equal to all right what do you have for it let's see the answer for question 5 is b it is b let's look at what's happening here if you remember that when you have a term like this in bracket raised to a power in this case you will multiply the powers the 2 must multiply the 3 so you have a to the 6 once you see that you know the answer is not a and it's not c either but then what could have possibly caused an 8 to come here? It would have to be 2 by 4, but where is the 4? There is no 4 there to multiply the 2 to make it become 8. So the answer would have to be B. You can reason it out like that. Remember it's multiple choice. So you are not required to show working in the paper 1. So you can reason it out like that. But let's look at it again and expand on this a bit it's 2 in the bracket a square b but then what does a square b well a square b cube but then what does a square b all cube mean 
when you have a number cube it means that you have the number three of them and they multiply one another so a square b all cube mean you have a square b one time a square b a second time then a square b a third time just expanding on it now what this means when you must remove the bracket all the brackets and arrange everything in like terms together you have two times a square by a square by a square all these three a's together the b's together b by b by b so what you have is two times a to the when you multiply indices like this you add you add the indices two one two four and two six so it's a to the six and you have three b's multiplied b cube but if you want to argue it even more why would you get a to the six if you expand everything out it would be a times two times i mean what is a squared it is a times a a squared again a times a a squared again a times a you see that and b times b times b but you have one two three four five six a's multiply one another so this comes out to a to the six it comes right back to it again two times that and b times b times b would be b cube so anyway anyway you take it it will work out that way the answer is b all right let's pause at question five for now and we continue with more quest with more of this later on